All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome everybody to AKS Office Hours. Uh, my name is Dave Strabel. I work on what's called our global black belt team as a cloud native architect. Uh, Kendall Roden also works on uh, and is usually the host here, uh, but I believe she is out on vacation fishing. Uh, if you want to connect with us, uh, uh, you can connect with me at Dave underscore Strabo on Twitter or at Kendall Roden uh, on Twitter. Uh, so anybody new to Office Hours, why we do AKS Office Hours is really to provide you uh, with updates pertaining to AKS, but also the cloud native ecosystem. Uh, so there's a lot of fast moving projects. There's a lot of new projects coming into the cloud native ecosystem. Uh, so it's really to give you updates on those. Uh, we typically host a short talk and, and or demo on different cloud native technologies. Uh, these may be just related to Kubernetes or they may be related to uh, AKS and Azure. Uh, we also love to collect feedback from customers just on you know issues you're having, blockers, any type of different use cases you may have or general questions related to AKS. Uh, kind of what to expect uh, for today, we'll do uh, some AKS and ecosystem updates. Then we have a few individuals from our product team uh, for ARC that will be discussing ARC for Kubernetes and doing an overview there. Um, and then we typically hold, you know, 20 minutes or so for the ask us anything. Uh, this is where you can ask, you know, any general questions. I will say we want to be two way interactive. Uh, I know you may have other questions that don't pertain necessarily just to the topic at hand. Uh, you know, feel free to put those in the chat window. Uh, there's other individuals from my team and Microsoft uh, that are always willing to help answer any, you know, questions that you have that are top of mind to you. Uh, all recordings and content will be available post-call. Um, you can get those on YouTube. If you go to our GitHub repo, I'll throw a link in there later for anybody that doesn't have it. Uh, we have all the presentations and links to all the videos uh, from past ones also out there. And as always, any thoughts or ideas that you do have or just general questions, uh, you can contact us at akosofficehours at microsoft.com. All right, so for AKS updates, uh, there's a few new things uh, that we just announced. Uh, one of them is in preview, which is called AKS Smart Defaults. Uh, you might have seen the announcement. I don't believe uh, the actual docs are up for that yet. Uh, they should be here shortly. Uh, but what AKS Smart Defaults are is it will give you a default cluster uh, based on different scenarios you may have. If you want to do like cost op optimization or if you want to do secure cluster, uh, those type of things, it will give you a default configuration uh, for those. Uh, so it builds out you know, specific things for uh, the node pools, uh, just security configuration, uh, even like some of the monitoring stuff for you. Uh, so that is in preview now. Uh, also disable local accounts in AKS. So if you want to disable uh, just the local account in AKS, that is in public preview. Uh, then there is also a public preview for event grid integration with AKS. Um, for the event grid integration stuff, uh, this is an area that we would love to hear a lot of feedback on. Uh, what scenarios you may have, what stuff, what kind of you know events would you want emitted uh, through Kubernetes and event grid? Uh, so for the latest release notes, uh, not a lot of changes here really. Uh, probably the new features of bring your own managed identity is now uh, GA, so you can bring your own managed identity for the control plane and kubelet now. Uh, preview features. Public DNS for private clusters is now in preview. Uh, I believe that has been in preview for a little bit there. Uh, so now a lot of different changes here. Um, for any customers that are uh, you know, on older versions of Kubernetes, we did extend uh, the 1.18, but that will be ending here soon. So the scope is limited. The extension is effective to uh, the end of July. 
Uh, so if you are on 1.18, you will want to get uh, upgraded to a current release. Uh, just to note also, especially uh, since 1.21 will be going out there, is that the pod security policy, Kubernetes upstream has, uh, will be deprecating that in Kubernetes version 1.21. Uh, its removal of the API will not be till 1.25. Uh, there are alternatives that they are working on upstream, uh, and you can also use things like Azure Policy uh, to uh, kind of enforce those same type of rules that you would with pod security policy. Uh, so take a look at that. Uh, ecosystem updates. Uh, KubeCon North America will be coming up in October. Uh, it will be both uh, in person and L in Los Angeles and also virtual. Uh, there will be the same kind of pre-event programming. Uh, I think one of the best things about QCOM is some of the pre-events that they have. Uh, typically they're free different things that, um, you know, different projects or vendors or the upstream teams put on. Uh, typically, they're no cost or very little cost. Uh, there's a lot of great pre-events, so always check those out on uh, their website. Uh, the main conference will be from the 13th to the 15th. All right, uh, so Kubernetes 1.22 release. Uh, if any of you have went from like the 1.15 to 1.16 release, there's uh, major APIs that were uh, deprecate and remove from there. Uh, with the 1.22 release, there will also be some APIs that are removed. Uh, of course, these are older ones, but what typically happens with uh, anybody building, um, you know, manifests, they copy it off the internet, and essentially those get put in, some older versions get put into your manifest and that. Uh, a lot of these are probably not ones that you typically use, but uh, a lot of times like maybe third party packages you're uh, using may use these. Uh, probably the biggest one uh, from a customer standpoint will be uh, the ingress APIs. So it will be removing the extensions v v1 beta one and the networking v1 beta one. So you want to use the networking.k8s.io v1 api going forward uh, typically to catch these uh, within aks we usually uh, project these this information that you in your current cluster you do have these deprecated apis running uh, one of the other kind of workarounds to this and a solution you can do is to catch this type of stuff in your ci pipeline uh, with using stuff like uh, like opa um, and conf test uh, essentially allows you to use like OPA uh, rules within there to catch if anybody's, you know, using deprecated APIs in their manifest. Um, you can also catch these things with things like if you have gatekeeper running in the cluster. I rather catch them in the CI pipeline so it gives a good feedback to, uh, you know, who uh, whenever that CI pipeline runs. Uh, so keep that kind of uh, for when you're going to be upgrading to V1.22. Uh, I would say if you do, you might as well start now uh, and making sure that you don't have any of the or using any of those deprecated APIs. Uh, headlamp, uh, just I, I called another uh, Kubernetes kind of UI. Uh, there's so many different UIs out there. Uh, somebody wrote a blog post on this, and I actually uh, never seen Headlamp, so tried it out. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. You can run it locally on your machine, or you can run it within the cluster uh, through uh, kind of uh, through a web interface. So if you have a lot of people in your organization, uh, this was a project put out by Kinvolk, uh, which is now part of Microsoft. Uh, so check that out. Uh, and that is all the updates that we have for today. So I will hand it over to our Azure Arc uh, product team, uh, and they're going to go through some of the uh, overview of Azure Arc for Kubernetes. We want to do this session as kind of a prerequisite for some of the other sessions that we're going to focus uh, on Arc, uh, specifically around like 
delivering application services with uh, Azure Arc. Awesome, thanks Dave. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jason Hansen. Uh, I'm a PM on the Arc team. Um, I look after Arc enabled Kubernetes, Arc enabled server, and some of the platform components that help our other teams like application services deliver their stuff um, to your Kubernetes clusters. Um, I'm also joined by uh, Daniel Sol uh, on my team, uh, who's focusing on cluster lifecycle management uh, components uh, for Arc. Um, let me go ahead and uh, throw up some context slides um, just on uh, focusing on Arc enabled Kubernetes, and then I'll jump into the portal um, uh, to kind of demo what this looks like uh, and talk through the capabilities. Uh, as you've been doing already, please feel free to throw uh, questions into chat um, or pop off mute if uh, you're so inclined. All right. So what we are trying to do in an, uh, with Arc uh, is we've got customers who are running lots of different stuff in lots of different locations. That can be Kubernetes clusters that somebody installed you know, and stuffed under their desk. Uh, it could be uh, in a retail context, a Kubernetes cluster that's running at a remote office, a branch office. Um, and really the question for our customers is, you know, how do I wrap my arms around managing all of these clusters um, across all of these uh, locations? And what we're doing with Arc is we allow you to attach those Kubernetes clusters uh, to Azure. Uh, and in doing so, you can see that cluster sitting side by side with your AKS um, uh, infrastructure running on Azure. Uh, and we can start to provide some day two management capabilities for you. So that includes deploying like Azure Monitor for containers or Azure Policy for Kubernetes uh, uh, to those endpoints. So really, uh, there you, Arc enabled Kubernetes uh, provides a broad support. If you are a CNCF conformant Kubernetes distribution, uh, you can onboard uh, using the Azure CLI. Uh, we deploy our agent operators uh, into the Azure Arc namespace, uh, and they run just like any other uh, Kubernetes uh, workload. And when that operator starts, it calls up to Azure and establishes a relationship with uh, a secure a relationship with Azure. We provision an MSI uh, backing this resource. Uh, so there's a concrete Azure Resource Manager ID uh, for your Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. Um, and that enables you to see this using Azure CLI and uh, of course uh, the Azure portal. Now, once this cluster has been attached, what can you do uh, with it? And so we, we've built some, uh, some service extensions and some integrations. Uh, the first is uh, GitOps, um, so you can apply GitOps configurations uh, to your Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. We also have this uh, in a preview capability on AKS using the same same bits. Uh, for folks who may not have heard of GitOps, uh, really it's a methodology for getting stuff into Kubernetes clusters. Uh, you define your desired state using Helm charts or Kubernetes manifests. Uh, check those into a Git repository. Uh, and then there's an agent, the flux operator, specifically in our case, which can monitor and watch that Git repository uh, for any updates and changes and apply those resources into your cluster. Um, we are using flux, uh, the open source component uh, written by uh, Weebworks and, and donated to CNCF, uh, which is now an incubation uh, project. And what we've done is we've wrapped some Azure goodness around that. And by that Azure goodness, uh, there is an Azure Resource Manager API uh, for applying these configurations, which means you can author it in an ARM template uh, or you can use the Azure portal to apply Git configurations. Um, more powerfully at scale, you can also use Azure Policy to define a policy saying any of my Kubernetes clusters in the subscription or this particular resource group must be uh, running these Git configurations uh, and have the Azure policy engine uh, enforce that. So um, super excited and I'll show you what that looks like uh, in the portal here in a moment. Uh, from an operation and monitoring standpoint, you know, day two is important. Uh, we can bring down Azure Monitor Container Insights. Uh, it's the same uh, bits that you are running in AKS today. We can now deploy to Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. Uh, stream back to the same log analytics workspace using the same uh, log analytics solution, um, which gives you the you know heads up dashboard for all your AKS stuff as well as your Arc enabled uh, pieces. 
Uh, last but not least, uh, for governance um, broadly, uh, our uh, Azure policy for Kubernetes uh, can be installed uh, using uh, our extension mechanism. Um, same gatekeeper setup that you'd be familiar with on AKS uh, deployed to uh, Arc enabled uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, as well. Uh, in terms of other features, uh, let's see. I covered monitoring. Uh, Azure Defender for Kubernetes uh, is also in public preview and can be deployed uh, to your Arc-enabled kube clusters, uh, which pull back the same recommendations, many of the same recommendations that you see um, uh, on AKS today. Uh, and then a few things that we've specifically built for uh, an Arc context. Um, uh, the primary one is this cluster connect capability. So uh, if I have an Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster, it may be running behind a firewall. It may not be directly accessible uh, to me. Um, I can use Azure APIs uh, to request a kube config uh, and then authenticate to that endpoint using uh, Azure Active Directory and have that connection hauled back to uh, Kubernetes API server um, uh, and use ecosystem tools like you know kubectl or lens or uh, whatever whatever happens to be to to interact with that um uh with that cluster uh let me go ahead and flip over and i'll show you what this looks like uh in the portal mm -hmm. all right uh so i'm in you know the azure portal um and i've got uh, a list of uh, kubernetes clusters that have been arc enabled uh, so here's a, a list of everything um, again attaching these clusters uh, requires you to deploy an operator uh, onto the cluster that does run in the azure arc namespace um, but then surfaces the clusters here um, if i go ahead and dig into this and this happens to be an aks hci um, box but uh, you see uh, resource overview here uh, we pull back uh, the distribution the infrastructure the kubernetes version uh, and you can since this is an Azure resource uh, full-fledged you can tag it um, you know for supply it uh, to a resource group uh, etc now this extensions mechanism is very similar to to aks add-ons uh, the different technique for us delivering this stuff but the end result is the same now for this particular cluster, I've deployed Azure Monitor, Azure Defender, Policy, and then some of the Arc enabled services. So the application services, uh, as well as uh, data services. Uh, these extensions are life cycled uh, into the cluster and uh, as updates and upgrades become available for these specific solutions, uh, they can be automatically uh, rolled into, uh, into your cluster. Um, this lights up uh, services like I mentioned before, uh, Azure Monitor Container Insights, uh, which should feel you know very familiar to you as uh, users of, of AKS. Um, and then uh, security services, so Azure Defender for Kubernetes, for example, also uh, light up, uh, which can make uh, specific recommendations about your cluster. Uh, so here we have a set of uh, recommendations for configuration, ranked uh, low, medium, or high. Uh, and then Azure Defender can also monitor for uh, changes in your cluster, so active, active monitoring. And in this case, it's uh, detecting a privileged containers are running or uh, something popped up in the kube system namespace uh, or someone created a, a cluster admin uh, role binding. Again, all brought back up to, to Azure and can be routed to other Azure services. So if you're using Sentinel, for example, uh, all of those uh, pieces get pulled, uh, pulled together. Now, on a GitOps uh, stand uh, front, um, this is surfaced here on this cluster as GitOps. Now, this cluster has one configuration that's been applied, um, and this is one binding this cluster to uh, to this uh, Git repository. Um, a few things that we've done uh, from the Azure API side is uh, we allow you to uh, pick the scope for this configuration. So we support both a cluster scoped config, uh, which means the service account applying the configuration uh, via Flux, it has cluster admin access. Uh, or we can provide, uh, you can select a namespace scoped uh, uh, configuration, uh, which means that the uh, config uh, has a service account or is given a service account that only has access to that particular uh, namespace. 
Um, so standard complement of uh, flux configuration here um, uh, that can be pushed through as we attach a config. Um, so adding a configuration, provide the name, um, give it the namespace, pick the scope, and then we can pull through uh, various parameters. Um, in terms of Git endpoints that we support, we can, uh, as long as your cluster can talk to uh, the Git repository uh, and supports you know, authentication, uh, either public, private, uh, SSH, or uh, HTTP slash personal access token, uh, we can pull uh, configurations uh, from that Git endpoint. So um, we demo a lot with GitHub. It could be GitHub Enterprise, it could be GitLab, it could be uh, a Git uh, repo that you stand up um, on your own. Um, and so that's that. Um, in terms of uh, Flux support, so today uh, we have Flux V1 as part of the GA offering. Uh, very shortly, we will be opening up a preview, private preview for Flux V2. Um, that should be ready by the end of the month. Uh, if you are interested in the Flux V2 pieces um, uh, and joining the preview, both for ARC as well as for AKS, uh, please reach out uh, to me and I'll put my email address um, uh, in the chat uh, to get to become part of that preview. Um, let's see. I think that's the gist of it. Let me uh, double check here. Um, questions? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so we did cover the, um, the Flux V2, so that is on its way. Um, again, reach out. Uh, does ARC support hosting third-party tools like Grafana, Datadog? Um, yeah, great question. So the ARC approach here is uh, uh, we don't want to get in the way of your kube cluster. So you can ARC enable uh, your Kubernetes cluster, um, get some of the management, uh, visibility, inventory, tagging, uh, cluster connect capabilities. Um, and if you want, if that cluster happens to be running Datadog uh, or you have your own uh, Prometheus Grafana stack laid down, that's totally, totally OK. Uh, you don't need to use Azure Monitor for containers. Um, if you do want the two pieces to work together, you know, lay down Azure Monitor for containers and it can scrape Prometheus endpoints. So that's kind of the overlap there, um, but it's not strictly necessary for you to, to run Azure Monitor uh, for containers. Uh, in place of uh, existing ecosystem tools that you, you may be using. Uh, and that's kind of the whirlwind tour. Um, this Arc enabled Kubernetes does set up the baseline set of components uh, for pulling down additional Azure services. Uh, so some you may be familiar with their Azure data services, uh, which brings down uh, database as a service. Uh, so SQL managed instance and Postgres uh, into your kube clusters, which allows your uh, database users to self provision database instances, uh, scale them up back them up, monitor them, um, as well as the set of uh, application services uh, that we announced at the most recent build. Uh, so that's app service, function app, logic app, uh, event grid, and API management as a set of application services. Um, that can all be delivered into uh, an Arc-enabled kube cluster. Um, and then, oh, uh, Azure ML uh, as well, um, where you can Arc enable kube cluster and then uh, attach that cluster uh, to your Azure ML uh, workspace uh, to run uh, training and interesting jobs uh, in the limit. I know whirlwind tour. Uh, any any questions? Happy to answer. Um, Dave, if there's anything. Yeah, if anybody you know has feedback, also you know features like if you've tried flux or tried arc out, um, you know features you felt that were missing or any type of feedback is also great on this call since we do have the product team. Uh, a lot of you may be new to just kind of arc in general, uh, so that's also okay. Yeah, um, and if for folks who are you know brand new to Arc, uh, we do have uh, what we call the Jumpstart repository, um, and this repo has a bunch of scenarios that have been implemented across Arc, uh, which includes server, Kubernetes clusters, and those uh, services that I mentioned. Um, a bunch of ter you know Terraform scripts and ARM templates that um, implement those scenarios in Jumpstart. Um, there's also an Arc box, which will give you a full all the Arc scenarios deployed in kind of a sandbox 
environment that lets you uh, kick the tires. Uh, so definitely, um, if you're interested, uh, check out um, Jumpstart. Um, very recently, uh, Lior has also launched a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called Arc Lightning. Uh, small 10-minute uh, segments uh, that dig into scenarios um, uh, if you want some additional visibility there. Um, in terms of Azure services not supported by Arc, uh, great question. Um, so uh, right now on the truck, we've got app services suite. We've got data services and Azure ML. Um, other services like Cosmos DB or Redis, for example, haven't Arc enabled uh, today. Um, we're definitely in listen mode uh, for customers in terms of what other Azure services you would like to consume in an Arc context. Uh, and again, you know, keep the feedback flowing uh, in terms of what that list looks like for you, um, as well as you know, scenarios that you would like to um, uh, see implemented or uh, scenarios that you're tackling uh, inside your organization. It just just to add to what Jason said, we uh, currently have um, an active investigation on how we can improve um, uh, Arc with OpenShift. So if any of you are using OpenShift and have got any feedback, um, that'd be great. Here's a link I'm just going to drop into the chat. Um, sorry for the massive text, but it seems will have its way. You weren't lying, that text is massive. <laughs> Just making my point. <laughs> uh, so the question around, is there REST API available for ARC? Uh, yes, there is. Um, so APIs for um, attaching configurations as well as all of the, the GET um, pieces. Um, so we are uh, working on that Terraform support. Um, with respect to onboarding, since we do need to deploy, um, you know, componentry into um, uh, the cluster as part of that onboarding step, um, we are working through how that would look uh, in a Terraform uh, context. So uh, I think we haven't necessarily cracked that nut yet, but it is something that we're exploring. Uh, the question is, why is GitOps working on Azure Arc uh, AKS, but not on regular AKS? That's a good question. Um, so we had to do some additional integration to get the uh, service bits working on AKS. So bringing uh, in extensions, for example, um, and that work has taken a little bit longer on the managed uh, offering. Um, GitOps is available um, in preview. Uh, on AKS, uh, and if you're interested in kicking the tires, um, again, hit my uh, email address above, and I'll uh, get you uh, all the information that you need uh, for that uh, for that preview. Uh, a little later this year, uh, that'll come out in public preview, um, so broad availability using the same bits between Arc uh, and AKS. Uh, and a question on Flux V2. Uh, we uh, are almost done with the Flux V2 uh, work, um, so that should be ready uh, for some preview, uh, private preview at the end of this month. Um, again, if you're interested in the Flux V2 stuff, um, uh, hit me up and, and I'll get you connected with the people um, that can put you in that preview. Great. Is any other questions uh, anybody else has uh, on ARC or just general feedback? No questions at all today. It's quite weak. Uh, well, thanks, Jason, uh, for joining, uh, and Daniel so also. Uh, and thanks for putting your email in there. You're very courageous for just putting your email in a uh, meeting chat there. <laughs> um, so I just added a, a, yeah, another question. Uh, so is the Azure AAD RBAC role integration eh, that's currently uh, supported on AKS clusters, is that also already on our ARC enabled clusters? Yeah, so that you can assign the Azure AD role to the uh, Azure resource and that's got propagated into the cluster to the authorization. Menu. Yeah. Yeah, great question. Uh, so we do uh, have the, that component or that scenario supported in uh, in Arc. Um, 
there are some additional components that do need to be deployed to the uh, cluster. So we've got uh, the authentication authorization webhooks, um, which are there. Um, in the ARC context, the one challenge we have deploying it out of the box is that you do need to set API server flags to turn that on. Uh, so it's not something that we can necessarily deploy right out of the box, but it is a supported scenario uh, if you can flip the bits uh, on your API server flag, uh, API server. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, two other ones. Oh, DR with ARC. Uh, great question. Um, I think you know, we don't support DR out of the box, um, since that can be a pretty complicated uh, set of implications there. Um, if you've got a scenario right up, again, uh, shoot that over um, and be interested in connecting you to the folks from, say, like our Azure backup teams that are thinking about some of those uh, scenarios. Um, uh, in terms of EKS support, um, our baseline for uh, our attachment is uh, CNCF conformant Kubernetes, uh, so we can attach to uh, EKS clusters. Um, you then get to many of the day two experiences that we talked about, so deploying um, extensions, deploying and attaching GitOps configurations uh, to EKS. Uh, we don't currently lifecycle EKS, uh, so you know scaling and upgrading or uh, doing any of the cluster management stuff. It's focused more on that uh, policy API server kind of uh, up set of scenarios. Um, if and where it does come to lifecycle management, though, uh, Daniel Sol would uh, definitely be interested in your uh, feedback uh, and your uh, thoughts. Uh, so reach out to Daniel on those points. And I think there was a question. Uh, I'm not sure you answered it yet uh, on uh, service mesh capabilities coming with Arc. Ah, uh, yeah, service mesh. Uh, so we did uh, announce uh, the, the weeks have all blended together. What was that build? I think it was yeah, it build uh, uh, open service mesh uh, support uh, for Arc enabled Kubernetes, so you can deploy it um, uh, through the extensions mechanism. Uh, that does lay down the the OSM bits that you see, the open service mesh bits that you see today, um, and will provide you know updates and upgrades to that uh, going forward. So uh, I'll we'll, we'll go dig up that doc real quick and uh, link that here in chat. Yeah, and beyond Arc, uh, there is a preview for Open Service Mesh just in uh, AKS also. Uh, and that is in public preview today that you can go and enable. Not in production. Uh, do we have a shared uh, RACI model? Uh, we don't have anything formal, but uh, that is a good uh, suggestion. Um, let me take that back to the team. Thanks, Daniel. I double spammed the OSM stuff. <laughs> All right, any other questions for the ARC team? Uh, uh, I think great. there's another one. Yeah, <laughs> the hits, they keep on coming. Uh, so uh, Azure Backup Team is looking at backup scenarios uh, for ARC uh, clusters. Um, uh, so there is some, some some stuff in the works from a backup standpoint. Uh, again, if you know the Valero supports the underlying uh, Kube distro, uh, you can always uh, continue to use that uh, tool to Hoover down your your manifests, backup uh, your storages. Yeah, and we'd definitely love to hear kind of uh, more on kind of your use cases and requirements around uh, backup and DR. Because uh, I think this is something becoming uh, much more needed with a lot of customers running stateful workloads. Uh, so if you do have stuff around that, please give us feedback in those areas. 
because, you know, Valero in general, I think, has some gaps in what you really need from a DR uh, strategy with Kubernetes, uh, at least for stateful workloads. Any other questions out there? I will open it up to to you can it doesn't need to be an arc question. Any question uh, at all is OK at this point. If we don't have any additional questions, uh, we can wrap it up a little early today. Um, this is Stephen Barry with Free Cloud. I did post a question to the chat. It was to do with a couple of uh, preview features, specifically managed uh, pod identity and also the CSI secrets driver. Those have been in preview for a while, uh, and I believe <clears throat> managed pod identity may not even get to GA in its current form. Um, so general position might be is we probably shouldn't. Is there any way to be notified whether the thing, these things will actually ever come to maturity? Um, this difference between if you have something out there for a year, it becomes frustrating. Like, hey, should we invest any time in this, or should we continue to invest the time in it? Yeah, totally understand. Uh, I will say we do we do on these calls. Uh, I believe every other month do have the product, the AKS product team on that kind of discuss discuss the roadmap. Uh, and you make a good point, like pod identity, it's moving to a V2, so the V1 will not go GA. Uh, so uh, the best place, I think, really to kind of follow the roadmap and engage with the product team is through the AKS GitHub repo, because uh, we post the whole roadmap is public. Uh, our product managers watch, you know, issues in the GitHub repo, so you can post those type of questions. Otherwise, our bi-monthly one that we hold on this call with the product team is also a really good way to engage uh, and kind of understand kind of the timelines. Uh, we may not always have exact timeline because a lot of it's based on customer feedback and issues we see over a period of time. Uh, but those are probably the two best ways, I think, to engage with our product teams on AKS. Yeah, I, I just think that after a year, you should put something on the documentation that says, hey, we're not even going to do this anymore. So I just, just beef up the documentation so we don't have to, I mean, it's, it, you have to go this extra step to check the roadmap to see is it even worth investing the time. Certainly after a year, I think, I think it could be helpful and just be a bit more upfront about some of these things, you know. Uh, uh, just yeah. a personal opinion, you know what I'm saying? Yes, uh, yes. Because not everyone's going to know it. They have to go to the roadmap to find out if it's actually going to going to make it. So, um, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll take that feedback uh, back to them. Uh, but totally agree and hear kind of your and really hear your pain point there. Yeah, and it's, it's a great feature. I really wish they were available. It's just disappointed they're not even going to make it. Maybe you know, you know. So. Yep. Thank you for that. Any other so, last minute questions? Yeah, I, I posted another question on uh, Azure policy for Kubernetes. So uh, currently you can't deploy custom policies. I believe that's planned. I was wondering if that's coming uh, in the product. Will that also trickle down to Arc? And uh, yeah, for both of those, uh, any plans on dates for custom policies with Azure policies? Yeah, I know custom policies today are in private preview. I don't have a data. I, I, I can follow up uh, with more better timelines on public preview uh, for the custom policies. Uh, and Jason may know, like, will essentially any of the like Azure policies for Kubernetes work uh, with like an Arc enabled cluster? Uh, great question. So it's yeah, the same the same code uh, that's running on AKS is running in an art context. So largely, yes, um, there are some uh, context differences. So th think like public IP address or private IP address for load balancer type of policies may not apply uh, specifically in an arc context, but uh, that'd be there uh, in terms of feature capabilities like um, custom policies. Yes, those should flow to uh, the arc context. 
Um, but I'm not sure what the date is for for that to move from private to public preview. Um, I have to go double check with the team. Okay, thanks. Any other last minute questions? Yeah, maybe something <clears throat> else. The uh, secret store driver for Key Vault. So, especially if you're combining that with Azure AD pod identity, it's it's not the easiest of configurations on. Uh, yeah, how to pick up your, your secrets. Is, is there anything in the works to, to make that a bit easier uh, to pick up secrets from Key Vault other than what's currently planned? Because it's yeah, it's not the easiest to configure. Uh, it's a bit error prone on, on how you need to define the YAMLs, etc., and uh, label selectors, etc. Yeah, I think the direction is still with the CSA uh, driver there uh, and currently how you do it. Uh, I think probably a good follow-up call. We probably should have uh, probably a conversation just on kind of more of Azure or AKS and security. Uh, so I, I will make sure we take that back and see if we can schedule that uh, and get some updates on things like pod identity, uh, secrets driver, uh, and some of the other security stuff going into uh, AKS that are coming up. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, super. Thanks. Any last minute questions? Well, I had a question earlier in the chat about uh, Terraform and the APIs for AKS. Um, is it we're going on in the background or does it make sense to start with, uh, with the implementation myself? And was this, was that related to ARC? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I would say we always like contributions. Jason, do you know if you know work has been started on uh, Terraform and Arc? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I need to go double check because we've got a partner team that's doing that for us. Um, so, Eris, if you want to uh, shoot me an email, I can connect the dots there. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, I, I'm a regular contributor to Terraform uh, for Azure. So it makes sense to just pick it up when I want to, but uh, it would be nice to do it more uh, in a combined effort. Awesome, yeah. Please reach out. Any other last minute questions? So I had a question on the application gateway in the chat. So does anyone know that if the application get, in, in documentation, it says it is multi-cluster enabled, right? We are trying to run multiple clusters, multiple services through a application gateway and AGIC. And uh, following the documentation, following the annotations, right? Uh, not helping. Uh, we we are running into issues. Uh, any advice? Is this something that we'll have to take through support? Any advice on how uh, we can approach this? Uh, so I'll say I am not uh, as familiar with AGIC. Uh, if anybody else from the Microsoft team has any input on that, that'd be great. Uh, I do know we have a couple other things that I don't know if they were published in official documentation yet, or uh, let me see if I can find those and I'll put them in the chat. Okay. I think the, the documentation says something, but when we try and execute, we are not getting that result, right? So, uh, Maybe it is a configuration issue. I, I don't know where it is, but it's very straightforward. It's really not not that complicated, right? But 
Yeah, thank you, Dave. All right, so we will uh, wrap up. Uh, thank you again to uh, the ARC team uh, for joining uh, and give us an overview of Azure ARC. Uh, like I said, going forward, we'll start having some more of the uh, ARC presentations from the product group, uh, specifically uh, around uh, application services is the one I think we have scheduled next. Uh, and then we'll probably have one on data services also. Uh, I took some notes on some additional sessions to think about, especially around security. I think that's a hot topic for everyone. Uh, so again, uh, thanks for joining. As always, please send any feedback you have. Uh, we're always looking for presenters. So if you ever want to present on the call, feel free to reach out. Uh, so. Thank you again for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Till next time.